This morning our reading is from the Gospel of John, another version of the coming of John the Baptist. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men might believe. He was not the light. He came to witness to the light. This is John's testimony when the Jews sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but he confessed freely, I am not the Christ. Who are you then? Are you Elijah? I am not. Are you a prophet? No. Well then, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now, some Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor even a prophet? I baptize with water. But among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untile. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The word from the Lord in the house of the Lord. I read the the words of Isaiah, and I wish I was a prophet. I mean, God talked right to him and told him all these wonderful things to say, and Boy, it would be nice to have be tuned in that closely. But since the coming of Christ, he doesn't seem to deal much with prophets anymore. Oh, there are a bunch of us loudmouth preachers who would like to think we're prophets. And we think we have a, a pipeline right to God, and we think that, that everything we come up with to say is straight from the mouth of the Lord. But come on, let's get real. We're people. We make mistakes. We're very erroneously applied to the job we do sometimes. But we still have the same task that John had. We come to tell people about Jesus, to prepare a nice smooth path so people who don't know him can be led to him carefully. That's what we're here for. It's what you're here for. You come to be, be taught, but I'm telling you, your job is to go out and prepare the way for the Lord. I don't know how many times you'll have a chance to have a conversation where this comes up nice and easily, that Jesus is coming, get ready. And they'll look at you like, yeah, okay. Don't invite them to bridge club or to, even to dominoes anymore. That's the problem, is that we seem to feel like we, we have to take that approach. We have to, we have to be able to, willing to, 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 to come at them with a club and beat them over the head until they acquiesce to the, to the things that we want them to know. That he acquiesces, another one of them, seminary word thing, theological. Word. It means they're going to give in. If you got a big enough stick, anybody will give in. And that's the problem. We, we want to dominate. We want to power over people. We want, to, we want to make them do what Christ would have them do. And there's no way, there is absolutely no way that we can overpower people's refusals, overpower people's declinations, overpower people's refusals. I think the song that oh a spoonful of honey makes the medicine makes it a lot easier. If we can simply speak about love with love in our voice. Now we, we want to fight it out in the newspapers and we want to fight it out in the courtrooms and we want to fight it out everywhere when the, the real battle is when you sit down with somebody that you may even know, think you know really well, and you have a cup of coffee 
and you have a chance to witness for Christ. We're all supposed to have, they tell us, to be good evangelists, we're all supposed to have an elevator story. Now, an elevator story is something you can tell someone going from the third floor to the first floor on an elevator. A, co a, a meeting up with Christ in your life that you can tell somebody about in 27 to 35 seconds. That's an elevator story. Now, if you can just get enough out to get their attention and they'll walk across the lobby with you or they'll sit down for coffee with you or they'll do anything in the world you want them to do if you just pique their interest. There's no way. There's no way anybody can preach good enough to convert someone in 23 to 35 seconds. That's not going to happen. But our problem is that we don't know how to even begin to talk. We don't know how to start a conversation. John did it. He stood out there and hollered out, you brood of vipers, you're all condemned to hell. It didn't win him a lot of friends. And in this day and age, it probably won't get us a lot of people to come back after the COVID thing is over and we want to fill up the chairs again. No, we have to... We have to do it with a spoonful of honey. We have to tell them how wonderful Christ has come to be in our life. How he's touched us in a crisis. How he's, how he's made us whole when we felt like we've been broken. How he is always there when I want to talk to him. Oh, those are the things that that we need to, to just begin a conversation so that the, someone will be, have their interest piqued enough that they'll want to continue that conversation. They'll want to they'll know more about that relationship that you have with Christ. You know, John came ahead of time to, to tell people that somebody's coming. Now, we've had an election and we had advanced guards that went out to all of these states where there were contested elections and, and they were supposed to prepare the way so that their candidate would get elected. Some of them did a good job, some didn't do a good job. Well, some of the people we send out to win, win bodies and souls for Christ do a good job and most of them don't. Because most of us Go at it with a goal in mind. My, what is my goal? What is my goal? What, is, what do I want to do with my relationship with Christ? What do I want to do that will make your relationship with Christ easier to share with someone else? I want people to know how much I love him but I usually don't know how to tell you. Doing is a lot easier than telling. If I can just show someone, if, if Saturday morning we give someone a box of food and they break down and cry, hey, that's the time that Christ can come into their life. But you have to be careful even then. You can't browbeat them into believing in Christ. You can only love them into believing. And what you're doing is convincing them with your life, with your being, with your love, that Christ loves totally, absolutely, eternally, non-judgmentally. They need to have a relationship. They need to have an inkling of what Christ is. And if we can get them that little inkling, if we, can, if we can just demonstrate, not like the prophets did with shouting off the mountainside, now it's down to where push comes to shove, and, and we have to demonstrate because our orations have lost their fire. Our orations have ceased to be effective. 
Now it's the demonstrations. And how do you demonstrate love of Christ? If someone comes and says, I need something, do you give it to them or do you say, pray? Maybe God will deliver it. God's not real great at physically delivering the wants. But we are. You and I can, can satisfy their worldly needs. We can satisfy their daily desires. And if we can convince them that we do it in the name of Christ, what an argument we have. What a wonderful argument we have. Much, much more effective now than the, the position of John the Baptist would be. I don't know where he would go that he wouldn't get laughed at. I don't know where he would, where he would go that he could draw a crowd. Evidently, in the time he came, people were ripe to hear about Christ. Because he drew monstrous crowds to the river to be baptized. But once again, when they questioned him, he said, no, no, I'm not, I'm not doing anything for you. But the one who comes after me can do wonderful things for you. He said, I baptized with water, but he will fill you with the Spirit. And each time we do communion, each time we have a baptism, and, and in doing so, renew your partnership with Christ. That's when he refills your spirit. That's when he renews the heart that ha we have for the love of Christ. Yeah, I'd love to be a prophet because I'd... No, I'm not sure I need to say that. I'm not sure I want God talking directly to me. He might say things I don't want to hear. But he will say one thing. That if you love my son... I will love you through eternity. And that's all we have. That's the only message we have to get out. That's our elevator story. That if you love Christ, God will love you forever. Doesn't take long to say that. Not only, our only problem is to find an ear that can listen as fast as we're talking. Because that's still the problem. We can speak the message all we want, but if we don't find a listening ear, we've wasted our breath. And I was a salesman for over 30 years, and cold calls were not where you did a lot of business. You cultivate, you groom, you begin to understand your customers, and then you can make request demands and even demand or orders from people. But we have to be careful that we don't send someone off, off and way off with our attitude of being better. Because we're not. Different. Not better. Yeah, be a prophet. Say that God said to me, I should say to you. That's what the, all the prophets did. None of them had, a, had an original thought in their whole, you know, anything they wrote down. Everything's, God said, I should tell you this. I'm listening for what he tells me to tell you. And you know, I think sometimes he whispers. Because every once in a while, I feel like, oh, that was... That was good. But the main thing I can remember is that he's always there when I remember, when I'm careful to remember, when I'm careful not to overspeak, when I'm not careful not to browbeat people, that if I love Christ, God will love me through eternity. If I love Christ. Simple. It's easy. but love him, that he might love you back.
the Monroe Doctrine was keep quiet and carry a big stick. Our doctrine must be keep quiet, have a gracious heart, that others might see love, know love, learn love, and be loved. Go in peace. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.